Hey, welcome back. Another day, another vlog. Hats packed away. <laughs> With the big clean out, because uh, we're all getting kicked out of our room, so I had to do some shuffling and cleaning up. So my hat's in my bag somewhere, so <laughs> I forgot to get it out yesterday afternoon. Hope you're all well, uh, everyone out in the podcast world. Thanks for being here as well. Good to see you and talk to you all again for Tuesday, last one before go home. So yeah, can't wait to get home to see the family. It's been a uh, long swing and uh, it's only getting longer and longer. I guess, I guess the less fun they get, the uh, longer they become. But um, no, nah, pretty good. I had a good win yesterday with the photos for the new video. Um, well, I, you'll say I had a good win. I'm one of the, it's one of those rare ones where I've got that much good uh, photos to use. I'm struggling. I uh, I trimmed it originally down to eighty odd photos, and and I've started editing all those. I guess sort of what you can sort of tell straight away which ones are no good. Um, which ones are, are going to be pretty much straight in. It's a couple of the big panos, which would look just look amazing. Uh, I think I've got like three or four. Uh, one with the one, I think one of them was with the 1DS and then the others with the M50. Uh, just got some really, really nice shots. So very, very happy with how this one's going to turn out. Uh, Photography-wise, I haven't got to the video as yet. But uh, I think I trimmed it down from about 80 yesterday down to, I think I'm at like, I'm going to say 40 or something. Uh, and that's with uh, edits on them. So now I'm going to have to go through. I've got a couple more to finish off and do the final edits on them. And then I've got to go through, re-go through every single one, work out which one I want and try and trim that down. I don't think I'm going to be able to get under 20. So I don't know how I'm going to work this out. It is going to be a long video, but this is also, don't forget, this is going to be a two-part video. So this will be uh, my sort of behind the scenes. Before I went out to this video, I did a bit of a video of how I pack up and get stuff. I've got that video pretty much close to done. Um, and then I've also got the actual video of the actual hike that I did to uh, Double Falls. So it's looking pretty good and I'm pretty happy. So hopefully by the end of the week, I'll have both nutted out. I'm just trying to work out. I'll probably put the behind the scenes one first. I'm not sure. I might do the behind the scenes afterwards. That way I guess you can see what I got and then you can come in and see how I sort of prep for it and stuff. So you get to see what it actually takes to be to go and do a hike and get all the video and stuff like that. So that's, I guess that's probably the better way. At least you get all that. So I might save some of the photos that I can then fill into the other video and stuff. So but I'm pretty, I'll see how I go. <laughs> There's, it's, it's one of those ones where those rare times where you've got, I guess, too much stuff. And you know, I've, I did it before where I had to, when I did the Dana Caprine uh, testing video and I had to split it into two videos because it was just a great, great day. I got a heap of stuff I wanted to, heaps of video, heaps of photos, and I didn't know how I was going to show it to you all without cutting out stuff that I wanted you to see. So that's, that's the hard part. Uh, with editing and I, you can imagine it'd probably be the same for editors that do big movies and documentaries I mean you can imagine some of those Nat Geographic editors uh, what they'd have to cut out what would go on the cutting room floor would be just amazing shots or amazing footage for any of anyone else they've got to then cut because they've got to get it within a parameter so and same with us <clears throat> I try and keep it around about the 10 to 15 minutes mark. Around 15 minutes, I think, is pretty good for me. Because I waffle on, I'll probably hit the 15 mark more than, and I go to 20 minutes. <laughs> uh, but, yeah, I think this one's going to be a reasonably long. I'll just got to i sit down and work out a bit of a plan. Once I've got to start doing the video, I can sort of see where I'm at. I just might shorten the photos and just not as – normally do like a 30 seconds so you can get a good, good sort of view of the photo. Um, but we'll see how we go. But I'm at, it's all going really, really well. I'm super, super, super excited about this one. Should be very, very cool. It's an amazing spot. Uh, a spot that probably a handful of people, I guess I guess white people, um, non-Indigenous people have ever seen. Uh, so it's one of those really special ones. Uh, so yeah, a little, little treat for you guys. And I'm pretty stoked with how it all turned out. So going really well. 
Now, uh, on a sad note, um, last night or just before, just got released. Uh, if you didn't already know, I'm a big baseball fan. I'm a Cardinals supporter, uh, have been my whole life. Uh, Lou Brock, uh, just an absolute legend of the St. Louis organization, passed away at 81. Uh, yeah, just a super amazing player to watch as a kid. Uh, high speed, just run. And that was, this was back in the 80s when you had like Ozzy Smith and, and Lou and that running around. And, and Cardinal baseball was all about bunting and stealing and just high speed, high energy sort of baseball. And I guess that's probably why I, I went to them. I, I started following them and I, I found them to be my team. And I, I get that. And yeah. Now the game's changed. It's all about home runs and dudes throwing 100 miles an hour. When back then it, it wasn't that. There wasn't the physical perfect specimens of humans. It was baseballers with just amazing talent and just desire to be the best and to win at all costs. And I sort of, that's probably what I grew up to, grew up now and now it's a little bit more, uh, well, definitely softer, but um, uh, yeah, it's a totally different ball game to then. So like he's come from that era, he was uh, just a legend and just, uh, yeah, obviously a tragedy to his family and his friends, uh, condolences to all them. And yeah, big uh, big fan of Lou Brock and a sad day for the Cardinals organization. So RIP, rest in peace, Lou, and uh, thanks for all the beautiful memories you've given all of us in St. Louis and around the world, even more. Rightio. Um, yes, now there's a medical school in Melbourne Melbourne's had a tough time lately with the COVID and getting smashed for six. Well, some good news coming out of Melbourne. Some, oh, good, I guess you'd call it good. Some some great great technology coming out from uh, Armit, uh, which is one of the universities, technical universities there. Uh, they've created an artificial skin that feels pain. Uh, just to, you'd imagine sort of what goes into that. It can feel the difference between pressure, heat, and cold. And any sort of changes, and it will react to that. So I guess once you go near hot, uh, it will then react and send a pulse down to whatever it's going to connect it to. Um, this is going to be used a lot for people that have artificial limbs and hands and stuff. Obviously, if you've got an artificial limb of some sort and you put yourself in danger without knowing because you can't feel the heat or crushing something crushing your foot or your arm and you're just not looking or whatever uh, having an artificial skin that can feel that might be enough to protect you to get away from something so that's basically what it's aimed at and as a brilliant idea awesome to see uh, uh, Aussie University putting sort of a world first out there that's it's always a proud moment I think for any country when one of their one of their universities or scientists makes a step forward for humankind so or or robots or i guess robots even could now have skin and feel that and put that into their uh processes so yeah pretty cool uh obviously it has a lot of implications in the medical and for people as i said with artificial limbs and stuff like that and then down the track even robots and then some other i'm sure there's other nefarious sort of stuff that could be used to for the uh, weapons and bad stuff so there's always good and there's always bad, but this I think, yet again, like Neuralink, there's possible bads, there's always the good side and the ones that really need it, so this could be very cool. So I think that's great, uh, good on them and awesome stuff. Uh, Google Maps is gonna be going dark, uh, won't be long, should be pretty close, I'd say shortly, the boys over at uh, Lou Later were saying, um, oh, excuse me, something in my eye. Um, Google Maps will be going full dark mode. Currently, you can sort of get it with the maps, but when the user interface comes up, it's obviously bright. So if you've got that in a car at night, then you get a big white burst in your car while you're driving. Um, again, it's probably not the safest thing. So it's a pretty good idea and awesome to see them changing over that. And I think it'll look pretty good actually in the dark mode. I use dark mode on my laptop and it makes a big difference. Um, I've got a few things on my... <coughs> six screens at work I have to stare at, but yeah, oh, it, it's when you're sitting in front of a computer screen for 12 and a half hours, 
uh, and you've got white screens uh, ramming it down your throat, it is painful. I used to get massive headaches until I got my glasses and I got that blue tint in these and it made a big difference. So <clears throat> definitely a good thing. I think the dark mode is definitely helpful, especially if you're getting sore eyes and, and you're in front of them all the time, definitely worth going. So good work, Google. Um, now, Freewell's made a anamorphic lens for your drones and your DJ Mo Osmo Pocket. So if you're doing a bit of filming and you want to spice it up and get a little bit more sort of cinema in there, uh, then check out Freewell. It's actually not that bad. It's 40 bucks. I'm pretty sure that's US dollars, but it fit the Mavic Air 2 and the DJ Osmo Pocket, the little gimbal camera that does 4K. Pretty cool. Um, did uh, Captain Drone had it? He had it on his little DJ Owens in my pocket, and it did an awesome job. Uh, the picture was crystal clear. I didn't uh, see a lot on. He did, I don't think he went into the night stuff. I only watched a little bit. I just had to quickly check in, um, but I'm not sure about how the effect is for the that normal anamorphic with the light and that sort of everyone sort of hunts. But it'll be great for that sort of stuff for your drones. You get that wide angle cinematic view which would be great for doing landscape stuff. Uh, so definitely go check that out. Uh, Freewell's pretty good. They've done the magnetic filters for the NDs. They're not super mega expensive for their stuff. And this is just another one that I think will sell heaps of. So very, very cool. Couple of new laptops out, uh, two of them. And for two reasons, same company, Gigabyte, or uh, brought out two. One's a OLED screen and a pretty darn good built for creators. These guys are normally do gaming stuff, uh, Gigabyte, so they have the Aorus, I think you, you pronounce it, uh, range, you would have seen them, they've done motherboards and worked their way up from motherboards and now they make a bit of everything. Uh, pretty cool, uh, both 15 inches I looked at. The creator one, which is called the Aero, it's a 15 inch OLED screen, 4K, so Beautiful pictures, super thin bezels around the side, decent on the top, really well made, awesome ports on it, um, and it also comes with a heap of high performance specs for doing video and stuff. Uh, you can go up to an RTX 2080 in it, so that's heaps of grunt, up to 64 gigabyte of RAM, so same as what you can get in the MacBook 16. Uh, it's 10th gen uh, i7 to i9 chips, depending on what you want. It's got NVMe SSDs in there, uh, so that's awesome. Now, for the your normal ports and stuff, it's got a ton of them, and you're gonna love this. Three USB 3.2, one Thunderbolt, one HDMI full size, one mini DT, uh, a headphone and mic jack combination, 3.5 mil, an SD card reader, which is just pretty much known. It's all a dongle life now. Uh, it's a pain in the ass, I've gotta do it with here, but I'm lucky I've got my pro grade one, which is heaps good, but it's very rare that you get them in the laptops anymore. So that was pretty cool. Good work, Gearbyte. And Wi-Fi 6, only two kilos. Uh, so a really lightweight version. I, I Fairly new. They didn't have prices on the Gigabyte site. So depending on your specs or what you want, if you are interested, go check that one out. But that OLED screen looked awesome. Very, very cool. The other version, and this is probably the one that's going to get a lot of reactions to that Boys on Unbox did, it's the Aorus 15G. Now, it's the world's thinnest and lightest laptop with a mechanical keyboard. So it's got mechanical keys. So game, obviously built, dedicated for gamers. It's got all the RGB. It's got the cooling fan, super cooling system in it, massive big cooling fans. Uh, it's got a, they call it the wind force, five heat pipes coming out. So it's just built for just punching out massive amounts of heat and awesome amounts of power. So very, very cool. Full mechanical system on the board. You could hear it, it like it sounded really, really nice. It was pretty cool. Um, so just heaps of good there. Does 300 Hertz, 240 and 140 Hertz options for your screen and it'll go RTX or your super range. So just endless amounts of grunt in it. 10th gen Intel, RGB, as I said before, 
and it's a full CNC alloy body. So just amazing, amazing laptop. If you're a gamer and you're looking for a new unit uh, and you're looking for something that can just smash everything, definitely one to check that out. And last but not least, Canon R5S. This is just hot off the press from Canon Rumors. It's a CR2, so it's not a wild wool. This is like pretty sort of semi-legit. Uh, we'll probably hear definitely a bit more about this. Don't know when it's coming. Definitely going to be a 2021 sort of thing. I don't think it's going to be this year. Definitely 2021. Uh, new sensor, 90 megapixel sensor. Uh, that's massive. Uh, I think the Sony A7R4 is a 45 megapixel, similar to the R5. So this is double what the R5's got as well. That's a 45 megapixel. Uh, it's also got a bigger and higher resolution EVF. I'm, I think the Sony was around the 9 million megapixels or some, or 9 million pixels or something for the that EVF. So I'm assuming it's going to be up around there, bigger, easy to view. It's, it's going to be a specific unit. I'd hate to think what it's going to cost. Uh, I think the R5 is about 7,000 in Australia. So I'm imagining this thing's going to be around the 10 grand. But for you landscape pros out there, uh, this could be a deluxe bit of kit for years. I can imagine stacking 90 megapixel images in a panorama and you end up with a two gig <laughs> panorama or something like that. Insane, uh, massive, massive sensor. Uh, be a pretty, probably interesting to see how it goes with low light though. So that'll be the tricky part, but it's coming. As far as you know, it's out. The rumor is it, people have been spotted testing it and using it. So it's it's coming 2021, that S model Canon R5 or R5S, which is, sounds pretty reasonable. Um, like my 1DS, which is that high megapixel version, basically in that same sort of genre as that. Uh, very, very cool. Whether it, this, instead of being an S model, maybe it becomes the the new mirrorless 1DX version. You never know. Anyway, that's it for me. I will see you all when they go back to the other office in Perth, back home. See you out in the shed. Uh, thanks for stopping by, and I'll catch you all tomorrow, Wednesday. Whether you go on this way, that way, I'll catch you on Wednesday. Peace.